Well, it is Borodino like you've never seen before. What is up, Kingsmen? Welcome back to the battlefield. Today we have a historical battlefield with a non-historical cores. Of course, the French are still here because the French are always here. You know, the French are always going to be in the battlefield. Like it or not, unless you're playing one of the one of the few cores, France is going to... I mean, they were just king of the Napoleonic era. I mean, obviously, it's called the Napoleonic era. So, you know, they're gonna be there. So, like it or not, France is back. Now, they are gonna be facing a different different set of foes than normal on the battlefield. You have a nine point UK Netherlands, a nine point UK um, Spain, Portugal, and a HRE, I think it's an Austrian force of some sort. And then an, I believe it's an eight point um, UK over on this side. Now they are going to be facing off. So the French have a 10-point France Espana. They have a 9-point France 1796 and a 9-point Flanders as well as I believe an 8-point Espana over here on this side. Um, an 8-pointer pushing up by himself already. They have artillery way in the back. Probably could afford to push it up, especially since their cab is already scouting up here and nothing has really showed up. Um, they hopefully will keep the light cav, you know, undefended. It's the only light cav they have. They have a bunch of dragoons as well. But that's about it for their uh, cav force. But, I mean, it's quite a massive cav force. It's all pushing together, though. I mean, talk about going into a combat almost blind. I mean, that's exactly what is happening here. Going in blind, but they do have one light cav over on this side. By the river, you can see pushing up that Chasseur Cheval. And that cab unit is definitely um, lighting up some characters, lighting up some infantry, so they know what they're facing. Now, the UK have a good amount of cab. We have artillery here already. Um, the cab, the UK, sorry, have some carabiners. They have some light cab. Um, it's going to be a tough one, but with so many dragoons from France, plus the other dragoons over here from this 10-pointer, you know, it's going to go well. Now, ooh, we have what looks like some Nassau, Chess, uh, some Hussars, you know, some Netherlands Dutch Hussars that may try to combat the uh, Dragoons. And this may set off the first of the bloodshed by the enemy, as they may be the ones pushing forward. Yep, they are. They're going to be the ones who are going to attack here. Look at that. And the Dragoons, here they come. This is not going to go well for the UK, though. The Dragoons definitely will take this fight. This artillery is still exposed. Here's that Cabinera unit. And they they need to get some squareables up here. They need to get up and push forward so that they don't lose a artillery and get hit before uh, they can get their infantry in position to defend. Um, yeah, you can see here yet another clash, maybe. Now the Dragoons are going to try to get themselves out of there, wait for reinforcements. They are probably winded. Um, the position, this position, guys, is going to always, as always, be very tough for the French to attack. It is a gentle slope in defense, in favor of the defenders. And today's no exception. Artillery set up in some very amazingly strategic positions. And Austria is already pouring in some volleys here against the French as they're trying to get in position. Artillery raining down... Just a constant barrage. Now we do have that cab engaged with Carabiners. Dragoons charging in. Oh, France may actually back charge their own cab here. Making it a big old cab fight. This, this cab is probably exhausted though. And there's a nice flanking charge going over the earthworks here. Breaking the cavalry. Now there was a clash Dragoons going in against some light cab from the UK. Uh, but as the infantry now start pushing forward, France has some cav superiority for now. That is a good thing. Um, over here, Austria. Man, they are just... Oh, it looks so epic. So awesome. France returning fire. They have plenty of troops here. Oh, the artillery is firing from way behind this river, cab defending it, more and more cab pushing across, just tons of dragoons here, they do have some cross the air. Um, but they gotta be careful with that, 
that heavy cav because it will get focused down by the artillery here. This French infantry, though, is just getting blasted by the guns. That gun placement right here, just shredding into these poor French infantry. And while they're forming up, what makes matters worse is they're getting shot up by the Austrian line. So not an easy fight by any means. We do have more cav, it looks like maybe engaging here. France is utilizing the huge cav advantage they have, um, shifting around behind the UK. The UK gonna have to use troops to actually defend the rear of their line. However, they do have the earthworks, the high ground. Um, this battle seems to still be kind of split into two places. However, we have a fight on the left side that's gearing up to be, you know, quite fierce. This never usually is a fight on this left side. Usually they retreat to the uh, center. So this is kind of cool. You know, different, different uh, positioning on the field. And France is going to have to stop and fight them. Now, this is a nine-pointer versus a potentially, I think this is either an eight-pointer, could be a six-pointer. I don't remember all the points. Um, but the UK actually are pushing some troops out here into the open field. Oh, what happened here? Huge cav fight. Dragoons charging in, probably trying to get rid of those artillery pieces. What? Oh, the drag okay. So France is utilizing their cav to great effect here. Going in, they killed a general, um, but their cav seems to be dying now. So Austria brought a good amount of Chevaliers, it looks like. Hussars, uh, dragoons possibly, and they have neutralized much of the French cav, um, which that's gonna be a huge, a huge problem. France doesn't have cav. They are not trying to melee without cav. They still have that heavy crossiers, but besides that, it is it is gonna be a tough one for them. You can see the UK actually forcing them back here, actually pushing them into the forest. Now that can be probably a better defensive position oh, for the French anyway. Oh, our general is under attack. And they're gonna need all the help they can get. The UK have some excellent shooting. That is going to make it very difficult for them. They're going to want to close in for melee. Oh, man, this line is just getting shredded up. The reinforcements on the way, but still. Imagine being one of these units, and you're going to be sent into the meat grinder where artillery and infantry are just going to batter you down. Now, this fight seems pretty even, especially with Espana throwing themselves into this fight. The rest of the UK, there's two UK armies here, guys. And this French army is not really making a decisive push, and that probably is wise at this point. There's two armies here. If I was the coalition, I'd be sending this UK force over here to flank right here. Just pushing along here, starting to flank, sending the other one to be defensive along this river. It'd be perfect. Perfect. Because France is so consolidated over here, and they have an open flank. Oh my gosh, we have a huge bayonet charge. Oh, they went frontally charging on the UK. However, they did get another charge off, but still... That was probably not a very wise decision. They lost two regiments, and they are just going to get sliced and diced down here by the UK forces. And look, the UK are actually holding their own quite well. If I'm gonna guess, this could be Toro's or a, a Coldstream Guard, but more and more French now charging in. They can maybe break this right flank, but oh my gosh, at what cost? That is three units, maybe even four regiments from France breaking. And here we go, though, we got some general movement. Yeah, oh, this is a huge disaster. Oh my gosh, what is France? France, oh France, they are just dying over here, making a couple blunders with their infantry. That's okay, you know, but still, uh, this French army now needs to push forward and maybe get, you know, a counter charge on this UK. What happened here? What did I miss? Cavalry went through and just shattered this rush, this French army. What is happening? 
I'm speechless. Quite literally speechless. The coalition is throwing back the French with heavy losses. You know, I was just thinking about like how much the French probably hate Borodino. Oh, we have another huge cav and infantry charge here. But I'm saying the French probably hate Borodino because they had such heavy losses and they won but with heavy losses and it just seems like repeating itself. Cavalry go running down the UK here, so it does look like maybe the UK are regaining some sort of control on this left side. But I mean, their whole center is broken. Um, they're gonna push up with some Carrossier. Infantry pushing, they do have some of this high ground. I'd be pushing my artillery up to this high ground to shoot down on the coalition and hope that that's gonna help save, you know, this position. Oh, France still has some troops left. But keep in mind, guys, there's two fresh UK armies here. One is uh, set up here to kind of be defensive while France 8-pointer is going to push on them. The other one seems to be shifting over, but Austria has half their army freed up now. And they are just still obliterating this French army as they push forward to the attack. As beautiful as this battle looks, it is not going well for the French at all. They have an opportunity though to snipe some artillery that is shifting forward. They do have cavalry charging in. And that's one artillery down, maybe two. Maybe even three. Disaster seems to strike. Now let's check on this UK army. Uh, they've actually made some distance between themselves. Um, so that's actually a huge disaster. And there's still a fresh nine point France Flanders um, in this fight. We do have cavalry engaging over here. Dragoons getting charged. They still, even though they got charged in the flank, they still are repelling the enemy. But there are more UK now pressing this attack. Are the Dragoons counter charging here? Let's check over here. So much is happening all at once. Oh, Austria just all of a sudden out of nowhere is just, oh my gosh, so much is happening. The French seem to actually be regaining some sort of control when it comes to the cav engagement. And all of a sudden, Austria, who was winning so decisively, um, they lost big. And they are falling back. Man, this battle is just, it's its waves of, of heart, of like, Heartbreak, I guess, for both sides. Both sides have some huge losses, and all of a sudden, the enemy has a huge loss. And then all of a sudden, you know, the battles tip back in the favor of one side over the other. Very beautiful, though. This map is very beautiful. Now, let's check over here where huge gun emplacement to help defend the side. The coalition's just got to retreat over here where they seem to be holding off quite well. France is getting in a position of battle so they can probably attack. I'm sure the UK have forces set up along this line. And Austria is falling back. Um, across the river, this is actually an excellent secondary defensive position if you lose this one. Um, but keep in mind, there is a UK isolated over here. They're going to be fighting a probably survival battle at this point. Maybe, maybe though, it's worthwhile. They're distracting an entire nine-pointer. I guess we'll see. We shall have to see. The rest of the French are constantly pushing. The UK now reinforcing this side. This could be a painful attack. Look at all the UK pouring in volleys. They're probably dropping the French left and right. But France does have a flank they can push along the side. And if they push now, they maybe could catch the coalition out of defense. I mean, usually the UK, the coalition have an excellent chance to defend if they can range from this house along the river, but it also means holding this earthwork as well. 
Oh, France. France is waiting, I'm assuming, for the Allies to make their actual attack here. We do have a cav engagement. Carabineers came back, and they're smacking against the Dragoons. Um, France really was hoping probably to take out that artillery piece. Not going to work out well for them, and they are going to break. Uh, the rest of the coalition is falling back. The only real engagement now is happening over here where these poor British troops... Fighting a retreating battle. They could actually win this, though, guys. They could definitely win this. Um, especially if they just stay out of range and keep pouring in some deadly volleys. They could win that fight. The rest of the French are going to keep mobilizing forward here. They actually are going to cross a very um, a tough natural choke or holding point. Um, that usually the coalition tries to hold back whenever I played Borodino and we've had a fallback from this left side. This secondary defensive line is actually a really good place to defend. You have an LLC on one side and you can range all the way to the earthworks on the other side. But uh, we actually have some uh, skirmishing happening here on this left. A lot of UK kind of actually routing a lot of French troops that are Hey, honestly, if you're not going to take this fight, or if you're not going to push forward, push your infantry back so they don't die to artillery. Like, hide them behind the natural earthworks, even behind this river, so they don't just die to artillery. So you can then wait for the uh, your allies to push forward here. And then sandwich them. Then crush them from two sides. Either way, though, France, thankfully, doesn't seem to be giving too much of a break to the coalition so the coalition is going to have to uh, find some point at which to stop they do have artillery set up in a excellent position to drive back the enemy oh my gosh and you can see already what the french are probably gonna have to face here which is at least six guns if not more and you can hear them firing that's a lot of guns france may want to consider going more on the right side more on this right flank versus going straight at the enemy because look at that hold on we got some engagement here happening far back behind some cavalry engaging dragoons maybe they're trying to go for a gen snipe or for the artillery piece Either way, we have some... Where are the crossier? That's what I want to know. Where's that heavy cav? Also, let's let's check again on this French engagement. I'm sorry if I missed a bunch of it. Yep, there we go. France is getting engaged here. The melee finally becoming their undoing. And uh, unfortunately, with the UK breaking, this is a freed up French army. They have a long way to march. And there's some of the uh, heavy cav. They have a long way to march, but they can definitely make it to this battle. There's the crossiers. But Austria, you can see, has made the defensive line with the artillery. The UK general is dead now. Oh, this is going to be a tough battle. France needs to, if they are going to advance, they need to push up, push some cap and infantry preferably up to these artillery if they want to break them. I think in order for this attack to be successful, they either cannot attack right here where these five units are and attack only on the far right side, or they have to send cab and infantry along this side as well. And they need to, at the same time, this Espana needs to push up and attack so that the coalition can't face one and then the other of the enemy. So right now they're attacking them one at a time. Looks very awesome, but that unit's about to break. And there it goes. This artillery, the closer you get to it, guys, the more deadly this artillery is going to actually become. So this artillery, if they... Oh my gosh. Austria is holding once again.
These crossiers should definitely be used against this Austrian army. Before the UK get there, preferably, and form up some squares. It's still quite beautiful. drop to the next volley the last seconds probably of some of these troops in this line that is crazy but they are pushing up they're getting very aggressive very very close oh we have some cavalry charging in cross the air is gonna go for the Austrian line beautifully charged beautifully executed And here we go, there's the general movement as France is now going to uh, push up infantry as well. This is going to turn into a chaotic hand-to-hand -hand combat battle that Austria is not going to win. Oh, what? What? There is one cav unit from this UK forest left and he is obviously wreaking havoc. Um, really tying up a lot of French. Uh, still nothing. Wait, hold that thought. Oh my gosh, did I miss? I am not on my game today, guys. Uh, France is bayonet charging in here against the UK and Portuguese infantry. Not doing too well, though. He is breaking as the UK are going to start pushing this flank. The real breakthrough is happening here. France pouring through the center of this line. The UK actually need to turn their army and face this right oh, flank. Look at this center just getting blown through. France now charging down the line. And French infantry way well behind the enemy lines now. Man, this, this French army over here on the right has... They have a whole line that could have pushed forward at this point in time. They should have been pushing forward as soon as they saw this attack. I'm not sure why they have delayed, but at this point, they're losing all the glory of this fight. And they're breaking on this right side. They haven't even started engaging. Their line's just sitting stagnant, taking losses. But here we go. Now they're pushing forward. That's good, at least. Over here, though, the French are uh, making some huge gains. Now it's just a little bit of cavalry between the French and victory. some French cavalry charging in the back. This is crazy. This is crazy that these guys are actually getting broken. This is UK infantry. They should be able to form squares and they're oh, getting man, charged in the back lines. Um, France is losing terribly on this right flank though, or left flank for the French. Um, but it's not gonna matter at this point. The French are rolling over 
the coalition. Even though they are taking some losses now in a bayonet charge. Bayonet charge and a bayonet charge. They are breaking the French. Or they're. Okay. Bit of a blob here. Which is probably why he's fimming. <laughs> if you see a blob by the uh, enemy, I guess. You know. That is the one thing, if someone exploits against you, a lot of people will use that as then All being justifiable reason for then attacking you in return and uh, exploiting as well. And I, you know what? I'm not going to say too much about it except for that, you know, you get what you are, you get what you do. You know, if you cheat against somebody, if they start cheating back, you don't really have room to complain about them cheating. <laughs> Who knows who did the exploit first? It could have been the UK did some filming, so they blogged him. You know, you never know. You never know. This has been a very interesting battle, to say the least. There's been some effective tactics and then some ineffective, um, poor tactical choices on either side of the field here. The UK still have a decent army left at their disposal, and the French have... Man, they have lost a lot of troops fighting. The only fresh army is over here, and of course the French remnants that are marching over now after defeating that UK army. But still, this UK army is very, very strong still, and the French aren't being very effective at charging them over here. In fact, they are still, half their army doesn't seem to really be doing a whole lot. I mean, they're getting just obliterated by artillery at almost point-blank range. I mean, they could be pressing these troops up to get behind this UK army. This UK army is having to fight on two fronts, although France has basically, besides this army over here, they have basically lost so much. Look at this. Look at all the troops that broke. The men of fatigue, sir, and must rest a while. And there's troops over here flanking. If the UK are playing the cards right, they may actually, in that one swift blow, they could knock out half of this France's army. I'm not even sure what this French army's doing. They're kind of sitting here. Unless he's resting up, but these all look for the most part fresh. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. All right, so France is in full retreat on this side. They're going to press forward. Um, here's, here's what I'm thinking. If the UK unite on one side over the other, they could still win this. Um, their artillery could turn around if they wanted to. And this UK Netherlands could uh, fight a retreating battle using artillery support. As of right now... They seem to be, uh, the French seem to be playing apart from each other or not playing with each other, which is going to make this a little easier for the, the coalition to effectively fight them. And this nine pointer got a lot of deaths. They suffered some pretty hard casualties, and they were not able to actually totally finish off the UK, which is going to make this even tougher. But though these reinforcing uh, nine-point army is going to be helpful in then defeating the UK. Oh, artillery getting charged, though, so... 
If they can knock out all this artillery, it will make their job so much easier. And now that with the cavalry engaged, they can press forward infantry support. France over here on this side, so strong they could have, I don't know, I feel like they could have done some more, some more good to distract the UK so France could press forward. So much dust and smoke, it's kind of cool looking. There's, there's Austrian Cav left? Oh no, Joseph Bonaparte maybe kill, oh man. They killed the general and now they are, oh my gosh, they are smacking this French. Look, with the morale debuff caused by the army breaking, the general breaking, holy cow. The UK could push forward and probably disintegrate this army now. Well, maybe not because the cab is back, but that was a well-placed charge. And Austria managed to get away with it. Look at them. They're still here. Oh, man. Here we go. So what France should actually do here is keep troops right here to keep them engaged, shooting, push across on the flank here, which they're doing, and uh, start charging. In fact, even bayonet ch or cab charge them. Just charge them. This year, Portuguese, there's like a 50% chance that they can and can't form a square. I feel like that's a wise, you know, choice here because they, the UK are forced into a box here. They call it the new box. But they are being forced into a box to fight on multiple flanks here. Their, their backs are to each other, which means every volley, if they don't hit the troops in the front, they can actually hit troops in the other side of the line. Still though, guys, the French do have some concerning morale issues, at least on this side. And the UK could use that to their advantage here. France does still have cavalry. The rest of the nine point army is coming up. Um, and with that, they could use this army because the general's dead as a reserve push forward. Um, I would actually focus right around, hmm. I would actually go for the angle. They actually tell them to come here. I'll march up and engage them. You hit the flank with cav and infantry. This would be the best angle of attack here. Um, for this side, this is definitely the best angle of attack. Send your cav and infantry in, and you can start charging this way and that way and start crumbling them. Now we do have cavalry pushing forward here. Beautiful charge here. And this could start the entire collapse here. Send in the infantry, send in the cav while they're engaged on multiple fronts. Here we go, yep, send in that nine point infantry. And there we go. This is where things fold. And look at this, this is so weird. France is fighting back to back.
There's that freaking blobby again, though. Man. Vance needs to chill a little bit here. They're, they're, they're almost, they're like sullying their hands by, you know, just exploiting the game to try to win. And now they can push forward and finish up the last of the UK who are once again going to be forced into a, uh, another box. And uh, we got a nice juicy cab charge here with the Carrossiers. Flag still flies though. line is breaking badly now. Oh, look at the general here. He's just standing like, hold fast. He is surrounded though and ooh, he's gonna start getting engaged here. But that should be the battle, guys. Um, not the cleanest of wins. <sighs> not the cleanest of wins, and definitely, man, for a little while there, the coalition was just paying back every single loss. They, I mean, they broke French lines. They freed up so much infantry, but then France came in with a heavy cab, I think, and the cab and just smashed through. They retreated here, and they got hit right here as well. Um, yeah, just unfortunately, we're not able to really get a nice the win or capitalize on any wins that they made. Um, so yeah, it is going to be a French victory. I'm going to fast forward here and then we'll pull the results here because there's one or two UK troops left. I think part of the problem was the coalition spread themselves out, which is something I, I, t I say all the time. Don't spread yourself out along a massive battlefront. Focus in one area. You notice there was three French armies here and one by themselves, but the three French armies worked so well together, they were able to focus down the enemy. You always want to be together. Um, and quite honestly, something I look for in, uh, I did not, of course, pre-screen this, but usually but when I pre-screen, I look to see if troops are grouping up together. If I see a bunch of, you know, like three or four players all focused in one decent sized area all together, I know that's probably gonna be a better battle. You're gonna you're gonna coordinate way better with your allies, and you're just gonna do a much better job of uh, uh, beating the enemy because you have support of your allies. They're gonna be man. Look at this though. Sheesh. They're gonna, they'll support you better. You're gonna have reserve lines, extra cav, more artillery. Um, if the enemy are spread out through a line, you can just focus on one area, which is exactly what the French did. They focused in one area, broke the the uh, Austrians, and then just rolled down the flank, and the UK were eventually fighting a bunch of armies because they didn't help out their enemy all at once. Holy cow, the UK are just gonna keep breaking these guys as fast, come on. France, be smart about this. I say as they just keep feeding infantry into the meat I mean, I guess if they blow, eventually it's going to work. Glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. All right, well, anyway. I'm gonna fast forward here and get the results here. Um, not the not the cleanest fight, I would say, but still, you know, it, it looked cool. It looked cool, but uh, we can see here the 
Dragoons across the airs did well. I think Heavy Cav is always a must um, in battles these days, honestly. It, it's, it's such a good Cav unit to bring across here heavy cav c1 c4 c3 doesn't matter bring them they will sometimes <clears throat> especially if you can save them for an infantry battle they will save your life or your men's lives i guess technically but anyway let me pull up the results real fast all right guys so this battle you can see on the french side um 2165 for the kills for france france flanders uh 599 for the espana on the on the flank didn't really do a ton of damage i mean he was kind of falling back back and forth but then we have the other 1542 for the other french player and then eight point espana got 954 on the other side uk netherlands got 1199 um austria 968 you have the other 10 point uk with 745 and then the eight point i believe uk with 851 anyway yeah, so, yeah, very decisive victory for the French, but they still did take some pretty heavy losses. Still wouldn't be, as Napoleon would probably look at that still as, you know, losing too many troops in a battle. Obviously, he's not as to gores or anything, but, you know. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for joining me. Um, as always, you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll catch you all in another video.